few days back there, Natalie and I, we did a passage from Auburn down through the Sound of Lundy, down to Crewe. Swellies, eddies, what do you call it? Skipper Chris, overfalls, eddies. So when you do a passage like that, then uh, it's very important that you get the uh, uh, time right with respect to the tides, as you can be seen here on the uh, a tight atlas for uh, Sound of Lundy. So today we're going to go back uh, to the Sound of Lundy, but we're going to take a shortcut through the Sound of Kuan, where the uh, tides are very, very strong. So uh, when you want to do a passage like we want to do today um, through the Kuan Sound, uh, it's important that you find uh, as much information you can before you uh, jump into the pool, so to speak. Yeah. So I look in the almanac and it says here that the uh, sound is a useful dog leg shortcut uh, but care due to risk of fish farms and tides. Yeah? And the channel uh, is very very narrow and at the narrowest point is only three quarter of a cable that means uh, 100, 100 meters wide. So the place we can find information. Uh, another good book is the cruising guides. I have another here, cruising guides from the Clyde. Uh, Clyde. Let me see what they say about the, uh, the passage. So uh, they are saying here that uh, the tide can run up to uh, seven knots uh, in both directions. And there's very strong eddies. Uh, and especially where the, um, where the, the, the channel is narrowest. Uh, so it's very, very um, important that uh, if you attempt a passage through this uh, channel against tide you have an equitable accurate powerful engine uh, now saga only can do four to five knots of uh, tide so if we have seven knots of tide then uh, it will be quite a problem so we need to find uh, the right time to go through so we have optimal conditions um, it says here uh, even going through the uh, through with the tide can pose problems and the reason why it can pose problems so if you have the tide going with you then uh, if the uh, let's say you you get out of the channel you cannot stop uh, so for me uh, when i go through a, a narrow channel or into a, a river or so i like to go a little bit the tide a little bit of tide against us so we can easily stop the boat uh, and also of course the rising tide is better in case you uh, touch the bottom then the tide will lift you off the final statement here uh, in the guidebook is no matter the state of tide the brief passage is always full of interest. So uh, the passage is only about a mile, but it's a dog leg entry and uh, lots of uh, rocks, uh, fish farms and tide. Now, before we venture further, we need to get uh, information about the tides. Uh, and the tides, uh, we will find that also in the almanac. Um, so I'm going to do my uh, book uh, box of facts. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to find out is the uh, tide of uh, Dover. Most tide tables uh, and tidal atlases are referring to uh, Dover. Kuan Sound, very difficult navigation here and also the tide can run up to seven, eight knots so we have to be very careful to get it right. Natalie is steady on the helm trying to find uh, a stick on a rock, strict visibility as well. So let's see if we can continue or we have to uh, abort this trip, uh, this passage. We go to our alternative uh, anchorage. So we're just going through this very narrow channel and uh, as we are going in, of course the, uh, the fog come in. <laughs> so we have restricted visibility, so I've just fired up our uh, Radar, so that's going to get ready now so that can assist us uh, going in through this very narrow channel um, it's going to be very difficult when we get in here I'll show you there it's going to be very very difficult to get through there uh, we have to find a stick on a rock uh, and the tide can run up to seven uh, seven knots here so it's important that uh, we get this right more later I'm gonna be back up and see how Natalie is doing So we 
actually uh, we went through the Kruan Sound and uh, we got halfway and Natalie is now behind uh, the picture here in my uh, frame. She's there. <laughs> she's, in, she's looking at the beautiful scenery. So it is very nice and we decided to stop halfway and drop anchor. Uh, yeah, the cart mill is over there. So we decided to drop anchor here and uh, spend the night here and it was lovely. Uh, lots of seals, lots of bird life was here. So um, we really had a, a brilliant evening. I can show you here what's behind us. Yeah. So it's quite narrow. Narrow little yeah. And uh, when we came into the anchors and then actually had a, a little bit of a scare because suddenly uh, the depth gauge showed um, showed uh, 2.9 um, 2 meters. Yeah. So this is the first time she's been below three meters on the depth gauge. So uh, she was a little bit hesitant to continue. But uh, as you know, slow is pro. Uh, and also we were at low, at low water. So if we had touched the bottom, then um, uh, the high tide would, uh, the rising tide would have taken us off. So we're all good here and uh, we're just getting ready now to uh, exit. It's uh, morning, so we're getting ready to exit and go out for the sound, the last bit of the sound, past the ferry and under the, uh, under the power lines, which are 35 meters. So Saga can just get under with her 22 meters. So let's see. More later. Start, uh, running uh, eastwards uh, at uh, 11.53. Uh, so we want to be a little bit, little bit before that uh, when the slag is and now it's already uh, 10 30 uh, so uh, we need to start getting ready uh, and prep the boat get the anchor up and then uh, make our way through the uh, through the channel uh, we will of course keep you updated on how we go and uh, uh, how we <laughs> if we're gonna run aground or not but anyway let's see how it goes yeah all right Uh, yeah, so we're just um, finding our way out from this anchorage, this uh, tight anchorage. So we have to go over here and follow a narrow channel out to the main channel, which is also very narrow. 3.8, Natalie, are you sure about this? So here we have the Seal Island. So that's the Cardinal, where the channel is only about uh, 100 meters wide. And that's where you get the strong eddies and um, the very strong tides up to uh, seven, eight knots at the spring. So you don't want to hit that at the wrong time, that's for sure. And we're going to go up this channel here to the left. There's the power lines. There's our cardinal where we came in yesterday afternoon. So when we get a bit further up, we have to watch the ferry. As you can see, the ferry is very fast and it's coming across there and it has to ride away. Uh, normally like that with ferries, so we have to um, watch it closely when we get there, so we don't, so we don't get involved in that right away. There's another vessel coming in as well. So most important rules at sea is always keep a good lookout and watch the depth. So now we're coming up to the power lines, and we saw that the hat was uh, 35 meters, uh, so we have quite a good clearance because Xaga is only 22 meters so we should be able to squeeze under but uh, let's see how it goes and still we have to watch this ferry so it's just come out and uh, run us over and yes, we have nearly uh, one and a half tide of knots we left it maybe a bit too late to go through Are you okay Natalie? <laughs> Running against the tide. So we're nearly out. We have uh, one, one, tide, one knot of tide against it. And we're out in the sound of Nuni. And off to Estale, which is just over there actually. So we're going to go hiking today and explore a bit on the, on the shore.